Because what we need is more important than what we want. Amen. Not want to get us in trouble, but what we need is what we really need to help us. Right. You got your Bibles, go to one of my favorite books in the Bible, James. <laughs> James chapter 5, when we find it sin, we're going to read God's word together. When we find it, say amen. 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 Starting in verse number 4. Well, let's go up to 3. It says, You ask and receive not, because you ask to miss. That you may consume it upon your lust. You are adulterers and adulteresses. Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enemy with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Who's your friend? Think about that. Who's your friend? Go down to verse 7. It says, submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Amen. Draw not near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your, let your life to return to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Listen, verse 10. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he shall. You understand that? He didn't say he might. He says, I shall lift you up. That's something to be wonderful. When the Lord said shall, you can take it to the bank because it's going to happen. A lot of people may tell you, yeah, this shall happen or that shall happen. When the Lord says it shall happen, I guarantee you, if you take it to the bank, it's going to happen. If he said it to you, you better be ready because it's going to happen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you and I praise you for your many blessings. God, I thank you for another opportunity to come into your house to worship you and to praise you. God, I thank you for what I feel in this house tonight, God. Lord, I know our lips are clay tonight, God. Let us get out of the way. Holy Ghost, walk up and down the avenues of this place tonight, God. Lord, that you would touch everyone here tonight, God. You see the needs of the people. God, that you would move in a mighty, mighty way. And God, those out there across the airway, God, I pray that the unction of the anointing of the Holy Ghost will breathe upon them, God, like you've never been breathed on before. Because, God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice therein. And God, I thank you again for what you're doing in this house, Father God. Lord, it's in Jesus' humble name we pray. Yes. Amen. 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 If you look at the writings here that James had, starting in verse number one to go all the way down to probably verse number six, it's talking about worldliness <coughs> and who you're a friend of. And I asked you this morning, I asked you tonight, if you're a friend of the world, you're in the enemy to God. There is no in between. You can't serve God on Sunday and go out into the world on Monday and think, well, I can serve the world and I'll come back in on Wednesday nights or Tuesday nights and I'll, I'll serve the Lord. Listen, he said, I'd rather be hot or cold or, or I'll spew the out of your mouth. And I don't know about you. I don't want to be spewed out of his mouth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I want to hear, well done, thy child. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's what I'm looking for. I don't need to be a friend of the world. The world ain't done nothing to me but give me a heartache, headaches, and, and all kind of trouble. But Jesus has gave me peace. He's gave me joy. He's gave me happiness. He's brought me up right in my and set out from the Lord of Rock. And he's established my Lord. He's made a nobody into a somebody. If he does it for me, he'll do it for you. He'll do it for you. Number six. It says, but he gives more grace. Wherein he said, God resists the proud, but gives grace 
and to the hollow. Well, then why did I go to that one? I, we done read the where it said, if you're a friend of the world, you're a friend of the, the enemy. Now listen to me, church. When we let pride come in, we let envy come in, we let strife come in, that's blocking us from receiving what God has for us. I don't know about you, I don't need jealousy. I don't need envy. I don't need pride. What I need is an old face and no Nowhere. Amen. Envy will get you nowhere. Amen. Instead of being jealous of somebody, be thankful of this and say, well, Lord, the Lord has blessed you. Don't yeah. envy somebody because so God bless somebody. You don't know what they had to go through to get it. Amen. You don't know what they had to go through to get it. Amen. But he gives grace to the humble. Would you to look at verse 7. Because when we know who we're, who we're a friend is, to gain something for God, we don't have to know how to pray. Right. And if we don't know how to pray, because I'm going to tell you something, I learned from experience, you be careful how you pray, yeah, because God may give you something you, do, you think that you need, but you don't need. That's right. Amen. You may ask for something that you think you want, but if God gives it to you, then you start crapping and complaining, God, why did you give me this? And you said, well, you asked for it. What does it say? Submit yourself therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Preacher, I've been trying. I, I resist the devil. I do everything that I think that I'm supposed to do. And when I asked him to flee, he's still right there. Why don't you go back to the first part? It says submit. The problem is you ain't submit yourself to God. You submit yourself to the things of the world. You're submitting your things to your flesh. Instead of calling upon an almighty God, you let God come in for you. Yes. Think about that. Submit yourself. The word that submit means to give in to. Who are we giving in to? Well, let's do it another way. What are you giving in to? What are you submitting yourself to? If you submit to this, it gets you through. You pray. Submit to learning how to pray. How to seek God. And God will come through for you. I promise you. He'll come through for you. If you hold on to his unchanging hand. If you resist the devil. He'll flee. Because you submitted to him. You're walking the way you need to walk. You're talking the way you need to talk. You're doing the things that God said to do. It might not be in your time. But it will happen. That's been my hardest thing in the ministry. Is waiting on God. Yeah. I'm the worst person in the world. When God says to wait, I want to do everything but wait upon God. Yeah. Wait. I wanted it yesterday, and God says wait. But Lord, He said wait. Because uh -huh. let me tell you something. Sometimes we ask for things we ain't ready for. Amen. Yes. Ben and I done that. Got a t-shirt. Because <laughs> listen to me. Resist him, and he'll flee. Because yeah. listen to me. Satan's defeated at the cross. Yes. God gave us the power and the authority. Yes. And we learn how to use the power yes. and the authority that yes. God gave us. Yes. We have the authority. Yes. We conquer death, hell, and the grave that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Yes. We have what we need. We don't want to open up and use it. What we want to do is we want to depend upon on somebody else yes. to do it for us. What happens if that's somebody else ain't there? Yeah. Who are you going to call upon? Amen. That's why we got to live and pray right. and seek God Amen. and do the things that God says to do. Yeah. We need to submit ourselves to Him Amen. like we never had. Because I'm going to tell you something. It ain't going to get no easier out there, church. I don't care what the world's going to tell you. It ain't going to get no easier. But God says, my grace is sufficient. Yes, 
The second thing he said we got to do right here is draw nigh to God. Yes, there you go. Draw nigh to God. Mm -hmm. There's an old song. You know, we're in back here, right? I think it's 394. I think 390 something. It says, Nothing between me and my Savior. Yeah. If we're truly drawn nigh to God yes. and get close to God as we can, we shouldn't let nothing Amen. stand in our way Amen. between us and God. Amen. Because listen to me. I've missed so many blessings because I've let things come between me and God. But I'm learning in my walk with God. And Lord, I don't want nothing standing between me and you. I don't want to miss my blessing.
But when he, the temptation comes, I say, God, you removed this from me a long time ago. I don't need this. I need you. I don't need the temptation anymore, God. I've got you. And if we would learn to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding and acknowledge Him in everything that we do, He'll make the way for us. Purify your heart. Because listen to me. We got to come humble before God. Yes. We say, God, I want you to use me, but we don't want to be humble. God has to take you, listen to me, and put you on the pot as well and take you down. And he has, sometimes he has to pick you up and throw you back down on that part as well. But he adds that water. He adds that morning hill to the Holy Ghost on that. And he sort of puts you on that potter's wheel. And he starts making you what you need to be. Not what you think you ought to be. But he makes you what he wants you to be. And how he wants you to be. And he's not going to copy anybody else. He's not going to put you to be this dude just like anybody else. But he's got a way for you. He's got what he wants you to do. And he'll make you. And if you hold on to his unchanging, then listen to him. It ain't going to hurt you to go through the fire. your heart. And this is where we get in trouble. You double minded. You can't talk out of one side of your mouth on Monday and talk out of another side of your mouth on Tuesday. You got to stand on this every day of the week. Sometimes it hurts when God says to bless those that persecute you. Yes, right. It hurts sometimes when you have to follow what he said. But let me tell you something. It may hurt, but he'll get you through. He'll help you make it. He'll make the way for you. He'll open the doors for you. He'll part the clouds for you. He'll do whatever it takes. Just don't be double-minded. Yes. Don't be double-minded. You're going through a situation. Get your Bible out. Find a scripture that relates to what you're dealing with. And when you find that scripture, you read it over and over and over again. But after you read it, you stay. And say, God, I, I've got this situation that I'm dealing with right now. And you sit in my word, your word, if I stand on what you said, hallelujah, glory to God, that you would bring me through. Yeah, the enemy may come in and try to blow you down. The enemy may try to come in and take you down. But glory to God, if you hold on to his unchanging hand, don't waver to the left, don't waver to the right, but hold on to his unchanging He'll get you through. He'll make the way for you. He'll help you along the way. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart, Double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Listen to me just a minute. You're going to go through things in your life. That's life. We're all going to have situations in our life. But somebody please tell me I ain't found it. And I've read this several times. There's nowhere in here that says when you get saved, Everything's going to be real roses and peachy. But he has pleased some of the scripture. Because he says you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through temptations. You're going to go through things in your life. But he said be good, good cheer. Hold on. 
I'm going to get you through what I promised you I'd get you through. I'm going to make the way for you. I'm going to do the things that I told you to do. I'm going to get you there. You just hold on to his unchanging hand. Don't waver. Hold on. Trust in the Lord. Listen to me. First thing you need to do is quit looking at these eyes and listen to not these ears. These eyes and these ears are going to get you in trouble. But get into the spiritual realm. Get a touch of the Holy Ghost. And let God come through for you. Let it come through for you. Lord. You're going to go through things. Some days you're going to mourn. Go through sorrow. But right in the middle of it, he's right there with you. He'll give you peace. He'll give you joy. He'll give you happiness. He'll help you along the way. Peace first. He's got to be first in your life in all aspects. He'll get you through. He'll help you. He'll provide the way for you. Hallelujah. If you hold on to his hand. Let your laughter return to morning and your joy to heaven. Yes. What is he talking about here? He's talking about true repentance. Yes. And listen to me. True repentance will get you a long way with God. Mm -hmm. Don't say it out of your mouth and don't believe it in your heart. Then that ain't going to get you nowhere. Because yeah. mm -hmm. the preacher asked me and I just said it from my mouth. But down inside I'm not where I need to be with him. It ain't going to get you nowhere. Uh, yeah. What you need to do is find an old-fashioned altar, get your heart right with God. Uh, yeah. Then somebody says, are you ready? You can say, yes, I am. I know now. Hallelujah. I've repented. I've trusted in God. God said, if I hold on to his unchanging yeah. hand, yeah. he'll make the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. And when somebody says, hey, how do you yeah. feel now? Yeah. I feel I feel blessed. I may not have nothing the world has to offer, but I'm blessed because I know who my God is. I know where he brought me from. I know what I used to be, and I know where I'm at today because I'm blessed. Yes. Amen. Glory. Look at this. Look at verse 10. Humble yourself in the sight of God. Let's just stop right just a minute. Let's don't get to that second part. Let's do the first part first. There's passage of scriptures in the Bible. But a lot of people want to do the end and not do the beginning. Mm -hmm. And they miss it. They miss the concept of it. Let's just deal with the first part right here. If I asked everybody in here tonight who wants to be used by God, I bet we all would raise our hand. Number one, God's got to trust you to use you. Amen. Number two, you've got to humble yourself before God. Amen. When you learn to be humble, God can use you. Because right. listen to me, as long as you stay humble, pride won't come in. Yeah. Right. Envy won't come in. Good. Jealousy won't come in. Right. But if you can learn to stay humble, God sees you. God will make the way for you. Because when you humble yourself before God, He sees you, whether you're true. He sees what you're dealing with. Humble yourself in the sight of God, and He shall lift you up. Sometimes I thank God when nobody else is around, He knows how to lift me up. He knows how to give me blessings when I never expected. He knows how to do things that I never thought that He could do. But it wasn't nobody but Him that done it. Yes. 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 And the thing about it is, some of the best blessings I ever had, there was nobody around, just me and him. Yeah. 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 Just me and him. I'm saying, God, I thank you for blessing me. I thank you for touching me, God. Because you ever been in this spot in your journey with God that you may go two or three days and you're crying out to God and you don't feel nothing? Yeah. Yeah. He ain't left you. Amen. Amen. I was talking this week to the Lord, man, the Lord was talking. And he says, Sometimes I just want to see what you're going to do. I just want to see what you're going to do. Because listen to me, he's right there. He hears you when you're crying out to him. Amen. I miss blessing many times because 
I didn't think the Lord was listening and I would just do my little old thing. And I he said, Well, why can't you wait on me? Why can't you wait on me? Because listen to me. He shall lift you up. And I'm going to tell you something, church. When God lifts you up, there ain't nothing nobody else can do except stand there and watch. And God will lift you up. God will open the doors where no man can open them, and he'll shut the wounds that need to be shut. If you hold on to him, his unchanging hand. Because look at verse number 11. It says, Speak not evil one to another. Brother who speak evil of his brother and judges his brother, speak evil of the law and judges the law. But if you judge the law, you should. You are not a doer of the law, but a judge. You better be careful what comes out of your mouth. Amen. Amen. <coughs> because God can bless you and you can lose it because of what you say coming out of your mouth. You can lose it. So let me ask you a question and then I'm going to come to a close. Are you a friend of the world or are you a friend of God? Because when you're a friend of the world, <coughs> I promise you the world's going to let you down. Yes. It'll build you up so far that the great falling down comes. But when God comes into your life and God builds you up, and God starts building you up and lifting you up, as long as you hold on to his unchanging hand, when the enemy may come in, if you stand still and know that he's God, he won't, you ain't going to get let down. He's going to be right there with you. When the storms of your life comes, he'll be right there in the middle of the storm. When there ever nobody else, you don't think anybody else loves you, he still loves you. And he still cares for you. And he still wants what he knows you need. Not what you want. Yes. Or what you need. Amen. 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 So let me ask you tonight. Does the world have more control of you or does God have more control of you? Yes. Think about that. Who controls you? I ain't got my phone on me. A lot of people with a phone control you. Yeah. 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 Some people, the computer controls them. Mm -hmm. What controls you? I don't know about you, but me and my house, I want the Lord to control us. Yeah. 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 I want the Lord to control. Yeah. Yeah. And when the Lord controls, I promise you, he'll move on your behalf. Yeah. Yeah. He'll come through for you every time. If you hold on to his unchanging hand, you go by this, not by what somebody told you, but go by what this said. Amen. He'll make the way for you to stand with me. Come on, piano player. You play this morning, you can play tonight. Mm. Well, I'm not good at it. You're blessed. How's your practice? Don't know that yet. Our real piano player is not here. That, and I'm not the real one. Hey, the Holy Spirit can take over those fingers. All right, every head bowed, every eye closed, please. If you're here tonight. You can say, Preacher, I don't know who I'm a friend of. I want to say I'm a friend of Jesus, but I don't know. Could you raise your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me? I need prayer. As they want to hear tonight, say, Preacher, pray for me. God cares for you. Or they want in this house. Say, Preacher, pray for me. I need you. I need you to help me. I need you to lead me and guide me along the way. Or they want in this house. All right, you can raise your hand. If you're here tonight and you need prayer. Prayer for anything you're sick in body or you need something.